Please be seated. We're back for the afternoon session of testimony in State of Ohio versus Daniel Groves, State of Ohio versus Jessica Groves, case number 19 CR 586 A and B. Council and the parties and the jurors are present in the courtroom. Is the state ready to proceed? Yes, Your Honor. Is the defense ready to proceed? We are, Your Honor. Thank you. Yes, Your Honor. State may call their next witness. Your Honor, the state would call Dr. Muhammad Ali. Doctor, can you raise your right hand for me, please? Sir, do you solemnly swear the testimony you're about to give will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God? Please have a seat. Sir, there is media in the courtroom. Do you have any objection if they uh, film or photograph your image during your testimony? No objection. You may proceed, Ms. Hutchinson. Thank you, Your Honor. Sir, if you wouldn't mind, introduce yourself to the jury and then spell your name for the record. Yeah, I'm uh, Dr. Mohammed Ali, uh, and it's uh, M-O-H-A-M-M-A-D, and last name is Ali, A-L-I. Uh, I'm a, a, pa a pediatrician. Okay. And where are you currently working as a pediatrician? I work for a CAC of Pike County up in Waverly. Okay. Um, how long have you been a pediatrician? Uh, actually, 20 years now. 20 years. If you would, explain to the members of the jury your educational background. Yeah, so I did my uh, medical school uh, from uh, Peshawar University in Pakistan, and then I uh, did my pediatric residency um, University of Oklahoma, Tulsa. Okay. And what are your current licensures or uh, board certifications? Yeah, I'm a board certified pediatrician and I'm uh, licensed uh, in the state of Ohio. Okay. Um, and in your practice in Waverly, do you treat uh, pediatric patients on a day to day basis? Yes, I do. Okay. Uh, what is considered a pediatric patient? So, pediatric, uh, uh, from the time they're born to, till they almost um, you know, graduate from high school, it depends on what definition you look at. If you look at the American Academy of Pediatrics, uh, it's 21. Okay. So birth to 21? Yes. Okay. And you've been seeing children birth to 21 for 20 years? 20 years, yes. Okay. okay. Um, at this time, Your Honor, I'd ask that he be designated an expert in pediatric care. Does either defendant wish to question the doctor to the extent of his qualifications uh, as pediatrics? I would waive such questioning. We would stipulate his expertise as a pediatrician based on his, his years of practice and his education. We'll waive the stipulate also. Since his waive and stipulated, Dr. Ali is uh, being an expert in the field of pediatric, uh, pediatrics. It means, ladies and gentlemen of the jury, he is allowed to give opinion testimony in his field. May I continue, Your Honor? Thank you. Doctor, um, in the normal course of your business there at Valley View, do you maintain patient records? Uh, yes, we do. Okay. For each patient? For each patient. And each visit? Each visit. Okay. Let me hand you what's previously been marked as State's Exhibit 19 and ask you if you recognize these documents. Do you recognize those records? Yes, I do. Okay. And how do you recognize them? Uh, this is uh, when I'd seen uh, the infant in my office. Uh, I'd seen him there for a couple of times, different times, and this is one of the notes. Okay. Um, and when you say the infant, are you referring to infant Dylan Groves? Yes. Okay. Let me direct your attention to that time frame. It looks like you would have started seeing baby Dylan at the hospital, is that right? Yes, I did. Uh, okay. So the first time I'd seen him was at the hospital after he was born. And then um, once he went home, I'd seen him a couple of times at my office. Okay. Um, were there any concerns for the baby at the time you saw him at the hospital? Yes. Medical uh, concerns? Uh, yes, uh, so we had to keep the baby a little longer than usual. Normally we uh, keep the baby for a couple of days, uh, but Dylan had to stay there almost a week because he was uh, experiencing some uh, withdrawal symptoms. When you say withdrawal symptoms, what do you mean? 
what that means is sometimes babies, yeah, uh, when they're when the mom is pregnant, it depends on what medications they're taking or what drugs they're exposed to, and the baby gets exposed to the same. And then after the birth, uh, they, ex they can experience withdrawal symptoms. Okay. Would you explain to the members of the jury what types of symptoms you look for? So typically we look for uh, a lot of uh, sneezing, sometimes excessive diarrhea, tremors. The major symptom is tremors, shakiness. Um, and then uh, excessive uh, irritability, lack of appetite. So there's a long list of symptoms. Okay. Um, would a baby who's withdrawing from drugs experience pain? Um, that is uh, hard to say, but you know, if you've treated everything else, all the other symptoms, and the baby is still uh, irritable excessively, uh, then that could be one possibility. Okay. And you said you saw baby Dylan after his release from the hospital as well, is that right? That's right. Okay. Would that have been January 16th, his first visit with you? Correct. Okay. If you would, explain to the members of the jury what the reason for his appointment was. So basically, once they go home, um, uh, the babies, normally we see them in a couple of days. That's a routine. Uh, but especially in a case like this, you know, uh, we want to make sure we see them because we want to make sure that uh, after they've been treated for their uh, withdrawal symptoms, you know, they're doing better and they're not reverting back to the symptoms. So with him, that was a major reason. And do you call these visits uh, well child checks or well newborn checks? Yes, uh, well newborn check. Okay. Yes. If you would generally describe for the jury what that involves, a well newborn check. So at this stage, uh, when we see a newborn, um, um, what it entails is we want to make sure they're uh, getting enough nutrition, uh, we keep track of their weight, uh, and then, you know, obviously uh, their um, output as far as urine um, and, you know, how, how they're, in, in general, how they're doing, their okay. well-being. Okay. Um, do you recall or could you refer to your records and tell the jury who accompanied the baby to his first appointment? Yeah, so the first time I'd uh, seen the baby with a uh, foster parent. Okay. Yeah. And were there any concerns voiced by the foster parent in regards to baby Dylan's health? Your Honor, these are medical diagnoses. Counsel approach for a moment. So restate the question, please. Doctor, in your well visit with uh, baby Dylan and the foster mother on January 16th, did she express any concerns to you regarding his medical health? Yeah, a couple of things. Uh, she had mentioned that uh, he had been sneezing um, excessively and that um, had seen a few tremors. Okay. Before we go any further, is it normal for a baby to sneeze? Yes, it's normal for a baby to sneeze, uh, but it's... Um, excessive sneezing, especially with such a background and a history, you know, that it means a little different. Okay, and then also with the tremors? With the tremors, yes. Okay. Well, the tremors are, you know, uh, very unusual in a healthy newborn. Uh, so at any point, you know, if there are tremors, you know, then we get concerned. Okay. If you would explain to the members of the jury, um, if you remember, or by referring to the medical records, what baby Dylan's height and weight was at that visit on January 16th. Uh, yes, I can. So yeah, he was uh, 19 inches tall and weighed five pounds and 5.5 ounces. Okay. If that were a little less than what he weighed at birth, would that be abnormal? Um, his birth weight was um, 5 pounds and 10 ounces. No, that's not unusual. Uh, so basically, um, by the time infants are two weeks old, if they weigh as much as the birth weight, then it's fine. They can lose up to 5 to 10 percent the first week or 10 days. Okay. Why is that? A lot of times it's the retained fluid that they have in their body when they're inside mom, so they lose a lot of that fluid, and uh, you know, that, that's an important factor. 
Okay. And if you would explain to the members of the jury your general examination of baby Dylan, what that included and what you found. So yeah, the general exam, we do a basically head to toe exam. We check all the system, uh, you know, uh, head and neck, chest, heart, abdomen, skin, neurology, uh, all the different sy uh, symptoms. And basically that day, um, his exam, uh, there was nothing unusual about his exam when I seen him um, in the office at the time I'd seen him. Okay. At that specific time. No bruising to the baby? I did not see any bruising, no. Okay. Were you made aware of any injuries as a result of the actual delivery? Uh, not that I can recall. Okay. Um, and it looks like you examine extremities uh, and chest and back, uh, abdomen, no, nothing abnormal there either? No, nothing abnormal. Okay. And so other than, would it be fair to say that other than the withdrawal symptoms, he was doing well? He was doing well, yes. Okay. Um, and it looks like, let me direct your attention to January 23rd, 2019. Uh, did you have an occasion to see baby Dylan again in your office? Uh, yes, I did. Okay. And again, who was present for this appointment with the baby? Uh, the, a foster parent. Okay. And the foster parent that presented the baby for the appointment, did she express any concerns in regards to his health? Let me refresh my look at my notes here. Mom, yeah, the foster parent had mentioned that, you know, the baby had been excessively sweating, but did not report anything else like fever, rash, any illnesses, nothing else. Okay. Would the excessive sweating be related to withdrawal symptoms, or is that something unrelated? That's something unrelated. Okay. And if you would again tell the members of the jury what his height and weight was at that appointment. At that appointment, his height was 19.5 inches and weight was almost six pounds. Okay, so he's picking weight back up. <coughs> yes. All right. And so would it be a fair statement to say at that appointment the baby was doing well? Yes. Okay. Um, was there ever any concern about an abnormal newborn screen for baby Dylan? Yes, uh, the, so normally we do a newborn screening on all the babies. It's required by the state of Ohio. And um, at one point I was notified about an abnormal uh, screening. Okay, uh, and was that, baby. I'm sorry. But there was a little miscommunication because then after this visit, I'd never seen the baby. They uh, transferred care to um, uh, Christ Care Pediatrics. Uh, and then they had notified us about the abnormal screening, and we had thought that we had repeated. Normally, when we get an abnormal screen, the routine is we repeat it. And most <coughs> of the times, the repeat ones come back normal. Uh, so for some reason, we thought we had repeated the screening, but we had actually not. Uh, there was a miscommunication. Okay. And was that the 17 hydroxy progesterone? Y yes. Am I saying that right? You're saying that perfect. Okay. Would you explain to the jury what that is? That is a product. So on, on top of the kidneys, we have a small gland. It's called the adrenal gland. It makes that chemical. Um, and it, uh, uh, it regulates your blood pressure, your blood volume. Basically, it's, it's, it's a very critical um, uh, chemical as far as your, especially your blood pressure regulation. Okay. And so if the baby, in fact, had an abnormal 17-hydroxyprogesterone, uh, if that was actually an issue for the baby, um, it would cause blood pressure issues, did you say? It would cause excessive uh, hypertension, and it depends on, uh, you know, how... Because when you see the abnormalities in, in that gland, the adrenal gland, um, it can be to the point where the baby's not even thriving, the baby's not gaining weight, or the baby refuses to eat, you know. Um, so those are some of the symptoms. Routinely, we don't check blood pressures on babies when they come to the office, unless there's a suspicion for something. Okay. So that's why you don't see the blood pressure and the vital signs. And was your office ever notified about whether or not a follow-up was done? We just had a, uh, we had some communication from Christ Care Pediatrics, and um, that's the last we heard about the screening. Okay, so you're not aware of whether or not they eliminated yes, that possibility? I, I, I'm, I'm not aware. Okay. Um, 
if he had an issue with that, would that result in fractures to his bones? No. Would that result in bruising to his body? No. Would that result in swelling to his head? No. Okay, so Absolutely it's not, not. A, not an issue like that? No. I have nothing further at this time. Thank you, Ms. Hutchinson. Uh, Captain, you may cross-examine. No questions. Any questions? Ms. Scott, you may cross-examine the witness. Thank you. Dr. Ali, um, when you had the exam with baby Dylan at the hospital, was that at SOMC Medical Center? Correct. Southern High Medical Center? Yes. And was that at the same time that he, that was his initial birth before he was originally discharged. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. Were the parents present for your initial examination of baby Dylan? The best that I can recall, uh, I, I think when I did my initial exam, because the routine is when we do an initial exam, we go talk to the parents. Uh, so from what I can recall, I, I think I remember talking to the mother. Uh, just to, you know, because routinely we discuss the newborn exam and then you know, if they have any concerns, questions, or they would like to dis discuss anything. Okay. But your only recollection at this time, and I know it's been almost a year ago, um, your only recollection is you may have had a conversation I'm, with the mom? I may have. Okay. You don't recall having a conversation or dad being present for that conversation? I, no, I do not recall that. But it doesn't mean he was not present? Uh, correct. You just don't have any independent recollection? That's correct. And then the two visits that you had in your office, those were the child was accompanied by his foster parent? That's correct. And neither parent was present during those office That's visits? That's correct. Okay, is that unusual that just a foster parent brings in a child when a child is in foster care? versus a foster parent and or the parents? So that's a good question. A lot of times when we see these babies that are, because of the social situation, they get transferred to foster parents or relatives. A lot of times when they come see me in the office, just the foster parent is there. Sometimes, you know, you can have the relatives there. And, and then in cases, I've seen the parents there too. Okay, but it's more typical that the foster parent Usually will be there the along with parent. the child. Yeah. Yes. Okay, yes. thank you very much. Appreciate yeah. it, Dr. Ali. No problem. Any further questions for this guy? No further questions, thank you. Such as any redirect. No, Your Honor. Any other questions for this witness? None on my behalf, Your Honor, thank you. Is he excused? Excused. Yes, Your Honor. Yes, Your Honor. Yes, Your Honor. Sir, sure, thank you very much. You're free to go. The state may call their next witness. Your Honor, the state would call oh, Dr. Touch. He's got an exhibit with him. Oh. <laughs> He's got, He's got a paper with him. with a red sticker on him. Sorry, who's your next witness? Dr. Gregory Hudson. Dr. Hudson. Sir, can you raise your right hand for me, please? So I swear the testimony you're about to give will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God. I do. Sir, please have a seat. Now, sir, we do have media in the courtroom this afternoon. Do you have any objection if you are your image is filmed or photographed during your testimony? No objection? Okay. No objection. Ms. Hutchinson, you may inquire. Thank you, Your Honor. Sir, if you wouldn't mind, introduce yourself to the jury and spell your last name for our record. Okay. I'm Greg Hudson. I am a, a pediatrician. My last name is spelled H-U-D-S-O-N. And Dr. Hudson, where are you employed as a pediatrician? At uh, Christ Care Pediatrics in South Shore, Kentucky. Okay. And how long have you been a pediatrician? 30 years. Okay. Um, if you would explain to the members of the jury what your educational background is. Yes. I went to uh, college at Murray State University and had a complete degree in biology and a minor in chemistry, then went to the University of Louisville School of Medicine, followed by a pediatric residency at Louisville Affiliated Hospitals and Coast Air Children's Hospital, which is now Norton's Children's Hospital in Louisville, Kentucky. And what licensures or board certifications do you hold? I am uh, board certified 
uh, in pediatrics and have a license to practice medicine both in the state of Ohio and the state of Kentucky. Okay. Let me hand you what's going to be marked as state's exhibit 20 for record records, but I'm showing that to the Do you recognize the document that I just handed you? Yes. Okay, and what is that? That is uh, my curriculum vitae. Okay. And is that a true and accurate representation of your educational background, your experience, your licenses? It is. Okay. For the record, doctor, what is considered a pediatric patient? Pediatric patient is a uh, patient anywhere from birth uh, up until uh, 18 years or sometimes even through college age as far as the care that, that we give at our office. Okay, and so you've been treating children from birth to? Through college age. Something. College age uh -huh. for 30 years? 30 years. Okay, Your Honor, at this time, I would ask that the court designate him as an expert in pediatric care. It is offered uh, Dr. Hudson as an expert in the field of pediatric care. Does either defense counsel wish to question him as to his extent of his qualifications? Your Honor, we would waive such questioning and we would stipulate to his designation as an expert in pediatric care. We'll waive the stipulation. Given the uh, stipulation, court will find Dr. Hudson as an expert in the field of pediatric care, which means, once again, for the ladies and gentlemen of the jury, he is allowed to give ex uh, expert opinions. Uh, in his field of practice. You may continue, Ms. Hutchinson. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, doctor, before we move on to why we're here today, um, in your course of business over there at Price Care, do you maintain patient records? Yes. Okay, and are those maintained on every patient for every visit? Yes. Okay. Let me hand you what's going to be Martha State's Exhibit 21 for identification. Doctor, if you would take a look through State's Exhibit 21 and tell me if you recognize this document. Okay, and what patient records are you do you have there that you recognize? Uh, the patient records of Dylan Groves. Okay, and is he um, given a patient number or some type of identification for the record? More than any more than his name, or is do you just chart them by name? Uh, I, I go by the name. I mean, I, I think we do have a, a number that we assign. But okay, all right. Um, would you say that's a true and accurate representation of the records provided by your office to our office? Yes. Okay. Let me direct your attention to February 2019. Did you have an opportunity to uh, treat baby Dylan Groves uh, as a pediatric patient? On February, yes, in February, yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. What was the first date that you would have seen baby Dylan? Would that have been February 21st? Uh, February the 7th. February, okay, huh? February the 7th. If you would explain to the members of the jury how you became involved in baby Dylan's care. If, pardon me, I'm sorry? If you would explain to the jury how you became involved in his care on February 7th. Okay. Uh, of course, the, the parents had, had scheduled an appointment. We had, we had called, I do believe, uh, because of an abnormal newborn screening that all, all infants... Uh, get a blood test done at, shortly after the time of birth to screen for certain metabolic or endocrine abnormalities, things like cystic fibrosis or congenital adrenal hyperplasia, things like this. And there's a series of t panel of tests, and one of his tests came back uh, abnormal. And so we contacted them because they, had, they had, I think they had probably listed us as being the pediatricians in the hospital. And so we contacted them about coming in for an appointment, I think is what happened. Okay. 
what was the reason you said that you think that he came in because of some contact your office had with him that you were had been listed as a uh, the pediatrician at the time yes the whenever a baby is born the parents are asked who they want the pediatrician to be or who they want the physician to be to take care of the baby and that is uh, recorded uh, in the state registry I guess and so whenever the results of the newborn screening comes back they make sure they send it to the address that's associated with that physician okay and so when you saw the baby on February 7th, um, would you explain to the members of the jury what took place during his appointment, what your exam involved and what you found? Yes, he came in with uh, both his, his mother and father, and uh, there was nothing really out of the ordinary as far as exam, what to do, they come in and get a set of vital signs, get, get the weight, and then their uh, nurse asks some questions about how they're feeding and you know, if they have any concerns or, or problems and then they're placed in a room, and I come in, I talk to them, ask them a, kind of similar questions and make sure everything's going okay, then do a physical exam, just ask about uh, feeding and, and that sort of thing, and, and dirty diapers and wet diapers and how, how they're sleeping. Um, there was, the only thing that was out of the ordinary uh, that I recall from this visit was uh, that he had had this, this abnormal uh, screening test and so I talked to them about that and asked them to go over to Southern Ohio Medical Center to have some lab work done to make sure that even though the test had come back with an elevated level for a state lab that he was in fact normal and um, so that that was it we we had prayer and then uh, they left and went apparently to the hospital and had the lab work done Okay. Um, did they report, the parents report, whether baby Dylan was bottle or breastfed? Uh, yes, they would have. It would be here in the note. I don't recall. I think bottle fed, but I can look and see. Okay. okay. Formula fed, Gerber, Gerber soup. Okay, and if you would um, tell the members of the jury what his height and weight was at that time. Okay. His weight was 7 pounds and 2 ounces, and his length was 19 and a half inches. Okay. And then you said you do um, a general examination. Um, does that mean you do, part of that is a musculoskeletal examination? Yes. Okay, so what do you do when you do that part of the examination, if you would explain that to the jury? Okay. So, you know, we start with just looking generally at the baby's skin, uh, make sure the color is normal, there's not too, too much jaundice, that they're not, uh, that they're pink, they're not cyanotic, and then, uh, you know, you go from the head down, make sure that there's nothing abnormal about, about the head, ears, eyes, throat, uh, move you know make sure the baby is moving the arms well and has something called a moreau reflex so that you can kind of pull up on little baby's hands and just gently kind of let them go and startle make sure they have symmetric movement of the arms uh, check the legs make sure that the tone is good in the legs the muscles are good we, we we check the hips by by what we call abducting the hips we hold the the knees flexed and then go out with the hips and make sure that the hips are not dislocatable um, and then just kind of see how the baby's moving. So that's the general musculoskeletal exam that we do. Okay, and everything appeared to be normal from that visit? It did. Okay. Um, is it your policy in your office to schedule the next appointment before they leave? Would you schedule in advance? Uh-huh. Okay. And so when was the next time they were supposed to return? Let me see. Uh, we asked to follow up at the two month, two months and six to uh, eight weeks. And let's see. So I'm not sure. I don't see a, a date on this that they actually 
Let me refer you, I believe, towards the front of your chart. Okay, that's You provided good. Um, a document to our office that's labeled future appointments. Okay. I think there's two of them there. Yes. Okay. And so do you see one that looks like yes, the one that I have? Yes, it says March 21st, February 7th and March 21st. If you'll go to the next page. Okay. Sorry. That's okay. Um, and then what are what is the earliest date there? March the February the 21st. Okay. And does that, I'm sorry, the sheet you're holding there match the sheet I'm holding? It does. Okay. And from your records, doctor, did they appear on um, February 21st with baby Dylan? They did. Okay. If you'll refer to that part of the chart. Again, what's the purpose of that visit? Well, we uh, I think we wanted them to come back a little bit sooner because of the, uh, usually they come back at, at two months. So this is a little earlier than two months. It's about almost six weeks. But uh, one of the concerns, I guess, of course, was uh, the abnormal newborn screen. Again, we, when we sent him to the lab, they did part of the lab work that we ordered, but there was a, an error made at the hospital somewhere in the lab or registration, I'm not sure where, and they didn't do the second part of the tests that we had ordered. So we had the electrolytes that came back that were normal, that's the sodium and potassium in the blood, which were normal and very reassuring that he did not have the condition that the new, newborn screen indicated that he might have. But there was another test that I was looking for uh, that was not done. That was a repeat of the newborn screen, and so okay. they didn't do that. Let me ask you, are these follow-up screenings that you're requesting in regards to the abnormal screening that showed that he may have abnormal or elevated levels of 17 hydroxyprogesterone? Yes. Okay. At some point, was that eliminated? It was eliminated because... You have to understand that I was not the physician that took care of the child in the hospital at Southern Ohio Medical Center. So they came to me subsequent to that. And I didn't realize that they had done a 17 hydroxy progesterone at the hospital before he ever left. So with his normal serum electrolytes that were done on the 7th uh, of February, coupled with the normal 17 hydroxy progesterone level that was done while he was in the hospital, that pretty much eliminates the risk for him having that condition, uh, 21 hydroxylase deficiency or genital adrenal hyperplasia. So he did not have that, but I didn't realize that. So that was why I kept, I didn't realize he had that other test done. So that was one of the reasons I kept trying to- You kept to, asking the parents asking to the take parents him. parents to do that. Did they take him to your knowledge? The second time, they took him the first time, but I don't know. We never were able to get the repeat newborn screening done. That were, they, they didn't go back. Okay. Um, is my we'll, understanding. We'll come back to that in just a second. Um, so let me direct your attention back to this February 21st uh, office visit. Who presented there at the office with the baby? I believe it was mom and dad. Okay. And again, if you would, tell the members of the jury what his height and weight was at that visit. Yes, his, his weight was, well, it was 17 pounds, 15, seven, seven pounds, 15 ounces, although it says seven pounds, 16 ounces. I don't know how that happened. But it's seven, it was seven pounds, 15 ounces when I went back and looked. But, uh, and his length was 20.3 inches. Okay. Um, and if we reflect back to the future appointment sheet that we just looked at um, and the one before that, what were the next scheduled appointments for baby Dylan? So March, March the 2nd, March the 7th, I'm sorry, and uh, which meant two weeks after this one, and then again on May the 2nd. Okay. And would it be fair to say that March the 7th was probably because you had asked them to go again to get more testing? I think that was part of it. Part of it was, too, that his, his weight percentile was 
was on the lower end uh, of normal, and so I wanted to make sure that he continued to gain at a normal rate. So he was gaining, but not as much as you'd like? Not quite as much as I would like. Okay. But, but he started out with a low birth weight, so it was, it was okay. I just want to make sure it continued to be okay. Okay. Um, and correct me if I'm wrong, you did not ever see baby Dylan again after that, is that right? I did not. Okay. During that February 21st exam, um, do you again perform that musculoskeletal uh, examination that you demonstrated here for the jury about moving all the body parts and feeling him all over? Yes. Okay. No indication that he was injured at that time? No. Okay. And it looks like from the records you provided, your staff was attempting to contact the parents but not getting a response. Yes, I don't think we ever made contact, I think, by phone, and I think we sent a letter that we did not hear back from. Okay. documents in your records. Yes. Okay, and are those the same documents that I'm holding? They are. Okay. And so in referring to that exhibit, would it be fair to say that your office sent a letter to the parents on February 26, 2019? Yes. Okay, and what was that letter in reference to? It was in reference to the, uh, the laboratory uh, at Mobile State Lab. Okay, and so you're asking the parents to, to contact us. Uh, and it also says, so please give our office a call concerning the lab work that must be completed for Dillon, the state, and that's talking about the state of Ohio uh, and their, their laboratory system. Those people have reached out to us about this repeat newborn screening. If the test is not repeated, they will involve Children's Protective Services. I'm sorry if this has caused any inconvenience for you, but this must be repeated. Talking about that the newborn screen. Okay, and then there's also a, a letter sent from your office on April 1st, is that right? Yes. Okay, and what's that letter in reference to? It says, it is very important that you call our office, and it provides the number 606-932-2079. Uh, Please ask for Anita Jacobs. Okay, and your office was continuing to call by phone and not getting not getting a response yeah, I, at that I can't time. tell you exactly how many times or, or I don't have those those okay. times actually recorded. All right. If you would explain to the members of the jury what is the mobility of a baby approximately two to three months old? Uh, well, they, they pretty much stay where you put them. You know, they they uh, they move their arms and legs. Uh, they usually start start cooing and smiling around around two months, uh, but they're they're not really able to roll over consistently. Uh, they can't. They can't crawl. Uh, so they, they really don't don't have the ability uh, to to go anywhere other than just kind of where you put them. Okay. And is a baby of that age capable of inflicting serious physical harm upon himself? 
I don't see how they could. Okay. Have you ever seen a two or three month old baby in your 30 years of practice that's caused a skull fracture to himself? No. Caused a rib fracture to himself? No. Caused an arm fracture? No. A leg fracture? No. Okay. What type of reaction would a, in your experience of 30 years, would a baby have if they have some serious injury like that? How do they react? Well, you talking about bone bone fractures, like yeah. leg fracture, femur fractures. Yes. Yeah, they would be they would be in a lot of pain, just like any of us would be. They they feel pain just like we feel pain. And, and how do so babies exhibit they would, symptoms they, of they pain? They cry. Uh, they they oftentimes they don't feed well. Uh, you it's evident whenever you move them that that they're that they're in pain. I mean, when I simply examine the hips sometimes in stretching those ligaments of the hips, I can see those babies, it hurts a little bit, and they let you know it. You know, they, they cry, they, uh, mostly they just, they cry, they just, and they'll, they'll let out screams, uh, but they let you know when they're hurting, and, and fractures hurt. Okay. Um, how does, what kind of symptom or sign would you expect to see if there was a fracture in your experience? In other words, how would you recognize, how would a parent recognize the baby has a fracture? What would we be looking for? Well, it depends on the type of fracture. Uh, if you have a, a fracture of, say, a long bone, say a humerus or femur or tibia, the long bones, uh, if, it's a, if it's completely broken in two, what we call a transverse fracture, then usually you could see that the, the leg or the arm is, is crooked. You know, it's not... It's not normal compared to the other one. Uh, oftentimes there's swelling, uh, but there's always pain. Okay. Always what pain. about skull fractures? Skull fractures are often associated with bruising, uh, but uh, not, not always. But again, they're, they're, they're painful. Would and there be swelling associated possibly? Usually, but, but not, not always, but usually, yes, there would be. Could a skull fracture result in a brain bleed? Yes. Okay. If I could have just a second. <clears throat> Ron, I don't have any further questions at this time. Ms. Hutchinson, uh, Mr. Stratton, you may cross the team the witness. Thank you. <coughs> Good afternoon, Dr. Hudson. Good afternoon. Uh, just a few questions here. Um, you saw you, you uh, saw Jessica Groves and Dylan and Daniel Groves in your office twice, correct? Yes. Okay. Either visit. Um, what was your observations of the demeanor of the parents? You know, there, there really wasn't anything that, that stood out in my mind. Okay. Uh, you know, really, the, the only thing I would say is one of the things that I, I like to do is I like to have just a, a word of prayer. God would bless the baby. And, uh, and usually, uh, and, and it, it, they just, you know, the only thing I would say is when I got done praying, they just kind of looked at me a little differently than what I'm used to. That's all. But I, don't, I didn't make anything out of it okay. at all. That was the only thing I would say uh, okay. that, was, that was a little bit different about the visit. That's it. So they asked the appropriate questions, answered the appropriate questions? You don't know, remember specifically questions they ask. Okay. Uh, but, you know, parents are all different. Right. Some come in and they, they, they've had experience and they don't have a lot of questions. Yeah. So I don't interpret them by not asking questions to, to, to think that, you know, you know, there's something up or, or they're bad parents. Okay. Other parents uh, keep me in there a long time asking a lot of yes. questions. Yes. But there was nothing, nothing strange nothing about this. Nothing struck you out, yeah, other than what I told you. Nothing okay. at all. You mentioned, uh, <clears throat> you mentioned that typically a baby at this age, if he had some of the injuries that the prosecution had mentioned, that there would be pain involved. Like would, broken bones and yes. skull fractures. And, right. Yes. Yes. Uh, if a baby was in pain like that, the baby would scream, be crying. Yes. Okay. 
Would the baby be screaming and crying if the baby was under the influence of a drug or a substance, like a narcotic? See, if its arm was broken, but it was given or had drugs in its system, would this baby be crying? I would think so, you know, unless they were given, like, uh, medically high doses of some kind of narcotic, like, you know, if they're in the hospital, the intensive care unit, uh, and, and you, you have to give them medication like that to sedate them. Uh, but those kind of medications are very sedating. So if you have high enough levels to suppress, I think, the pain from a broken bone, typically you're going to have a baby that's, that's almost subtunded or, or going to be very very sleepy and not waking up and not eating and wouldn't be acting normally when you see them. What about illegal substances? If a baby had illegal substances in his system, Can you could specify that, illegal substance you're talking like, about? Let's say methamphetamines, amphetamines. That's not a pain killer. Okay. So, so none no, of that? that would not. that would not in any way alleviate pain. Okay. When you talk about uh, fractures to the skull, you said that they're not always bruising and swelling associated with those? Not invariably. Usually, but not, not always. Not always. Okay. No further questions, John. Thank you, Mr. Stratton. Uh, Ms. Scott, you may cross-examine the witness. Thank you, Your Honor. Good afternoon. Do you recall um, if you also treated um, the Groves' older child, Daniel Groves Jr. or not? I know Daniel's been in the office, but I don't remember the last time that I saw him. But this family has a prior relationship with you outside of Dylan Groves. They had your child, had their other they child in your office. They have been in the office with, with Daniel. Daniel was actually, I think he was in that day. Uh, according to records, I did I did look at that before I came in. I just don't remember that interaction. But yes, I did. It is in our records that I saw Daniel uh, the day of the first visit of Dylan to the office. On, so on February seventh of two thousand and nineteen, yes. you would have had a visit with both Daniel Jr. and Dylan yes. at the same time. Okay. So in this different rooms, though they weren't together. Sure, <laughs> sure. Well, one's probably thirteen, fourteen at the time, and then yes. you have an infant baby. So okay, I get you. Um, but this family had a prior relationship with you, correct? Yes. Okay. Um, so you've had multiple times to observe them. I just can't, you know, I would have to go back and look. Sure. So I can't, I can't really comment to that as far as observing them over multiple times. I'm sorry. Again, it's just one of those things I, I see no, a lot of patients that don't remember. That's okay. I almost feel like you're thinking I'm going to ask you a trick question. It's not a trick question. I just, right. I, mean, I guess what I'm saying, but I want to answer truthfully. Sure. So I, 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 even going back and looking at the times that Daniel's been in the office, there wasn't a lot. Uh, I think that in, in our records that we've had for the past almost three years now, I think there was only a couple of visits. One of them was from uh, February the 7th, and then he may have been out in our Lucasville office, which we had a different medical record, and so I didn't go back and look at that to see how many times he had been out there and if I had seen him there. Okay. Um, but do you did anything that you did review or look at um, give you any suspicion um, when baby Dylan was brought in that these parents were not going to be compliant with what you asked them to do? No, I thought they would be compliant with what okay, I asked them great. to do. Okay, great. Um, and as far as you know, they went over there and attempted to um, perform that lab test and there was some kind of error and... Yeah, they went They went as I, as I asked them to do okay. uh, and they did uh, that, that first time, they did exactly what I requested them to do, and the, the mistake was made on the, the, the hospital's part. The, the hospital made the mistake, correct? Yes. Okay. But it was the follow-up that we were unable to get them to go back. Okay. I, um, and I believe that you already um, stated that you didn't see anything odd or out of the way other than at the conclusion of this one prayer, you thought they kind of looked at you funny. Yeah, that's the only thing. And I wouldn't even bring it up except I was asked, and I, and I, I swore okay. that I would tell everything. But truthfully. they know that that's kind of a practice that you have with your patients, that sometimes you say prayers with your patients yes, at the end. Yes, it is. Okay, so that wasn't 
unusual. No, and they didn't object because I okay. asked them beforehand. I'll just break sure. down into a prayer. Sure, sure. So. Yeah, and that's a that's a practice in your in your doctor's office, and but they didn't. It was just a look. Yeah, that's and, all. That's and, all. And they didn't say anything out of the way. No, they did not. They didn't um, negate anything you said. Or... It might have been just surprise. I don't okay. know. It wasn't. It wasn't anything. <laughs> okay. Mean or, or unkind. Okay. Um, and I know that you were addressed or asked to address um, the issue of a potential skull fracture. Um, do you know how long it takes for um, a small skull fracture to heal or show signs of healing? I think, I think you should be able to see some, some signs of healing within a couple of weeks on a re-x-ray, I think. Okay. And the pain and the bruising that you talked about with uh, broken bones or skull fracture, um, would that subside over somewhat of a period of time once that healing began? Yeah, it takes, uh, of course, younger babies heal quicker. Uh, typically, you think about six weeks for a, you know, uh, like a long bone fracture, humerus or uh, radius ulnus, femur, tibia to, to heal. Right. Uh, so you would expect there would be some tenderness or some abnormality that you could see, depending on the severity of the fracture. Right. Uh, if it was completely broken in two, you should be able to see that, uh, a swelling, uh, you know, even weeks later. But if we're talking about a skull fracture uh -huh. um, that is not very long in length, maybe less than two inches, yeah, yeah, um, that was not a, like a crushing, yeah, not a it's, crushing it's a injury. Yeah, it's a non skull fracture, a simple uh, a skull fracture. You know. I want to call it a clean break, but maybe associated, like, I, I, I don't even, like... A, as far as, so... You're saying, what are, you, what are you asking me? I'm sorry. Like if, if the length of it, if there, it's not a crushing skull injury. Uh -huh. There's not an indentation of the bone. Uh, not a depressed It's skull merely a line uh -huh. fracture. Uh -huh. And obviously I'm not a medical person, so I'm not sure what the terminology is. Um, how long would that take to start showing signs of healing, if you are aware? Well, you know, I, I guess I can't, I can't say for sure. To okay. show signs, you mean like by... When you say signs of healing, you're saying that the bone that you was starting to knit back together. That you could x ray and see that there was healing? That's correct. Okay. Uh, you, you might see some signs on x ray in just a few days. Okay. But it may, it may take long. But I, right. I, I'm really not, I don't feel like I, I know enough about that to comment definitively. Okay. I mean, I know what I've read, and usually within a few days, but, but okay. that's not something I follow. Okay. And then um, any bruising or possible swelling that would be associated with that, would that go away after a few days as well? You know, it depends, again, on how much uh, tissue damage there was at the time of the skull fracture. Uh, sometimes there can be skull fractures, babies can fall out of grocery carts and not even have a bruise. Uh, so to say that the bruising will be gone in a few days uh, is, is kind of a difficult question to answer, but I think if there's a lot of trauma uh, to the subcutaneous tissue, then you could have, you could be a parent there for, you know, two weeks later, you could still see bruising. Because bruising is simply blood that, from the trauma that gets underneath the skin, and as that blood is reabsorbed, it goes from being kind of a dark purple to a, to a reddish, to a, to a, to a, a kind of a, a brown, a yellow, and then it, it, it is gone. So let's use your um, example that you just gave, that if a baby fell out of a shopping cart and caused a, a skull fracture, mm -hmm. um, that would not be like a crushing injury, correct? It could be. It depends but on how, you know, depends on how far they depends fell, on how the baby what lands. they landed on. Right. There have been some really serious injuries, although rare, mm -hmm. children who've fallen right. from that height. Right. But you use the example that sometimes you may not even see anything associated with Sometimes there not, may not be much right. of an external evidence of a skull fracture other than an x-ray, which is, of course, not external. Right. But as far as just examination right. with your eyes and hands, you may not, you may not be able to detect it. Right. But that's what I was getting at. So there may be some incidents that 
would result in a skull fracture that may show no outward signs such as bruising or swelling. That can happen. Thank you, that's what I needed to know. Thank you so much, Dr. Hudson, I appreciate it. Any further questions, Ms. Scott? No, Your Honor, thank you. They redirect. To Sophia. Doctor, you were asked about suspicion that they would not be compliant. And mm -hmm. you said in February, early February, you had no suspicion that they would not be compliant. And in fact, on February 7th, they did comply with your requests. Yes. Okay. But thereafter, they did not. February 21st, they did not. No. And, and then I they did explain to them, you know, from my perspective, why this was so important. Okay. And then they failed to show up for future appointments and failed to have contact with your offer office after that. Yes. Okay. You were asked about whether a baby would exhibit signs of pain if he were on illicit substances or um, prescription drugs, um, but the topic came up of methamphetamine and you said that's not a pain medicine. Yes. What does methamphetamine do to the body? What does methamphetamine do? Yeah, what effect does it have on an infant's body if, if a baby's exposed to a methamphetamine? Well, if you would expect the baby is, you know, amphetamines are stimulants, okay? So uh, you would expect the baby to, to be uh, crying a lot. You know what the babies do? They, you get overstimulated, you expect them to cry a lot, you expect them to not sleep uh, if they were under, you know, influence of methamphetamine, maybe not to eat well, maybe to vomit, but... Uh, but sleeping and, and, and not experiencing pain, I wouldn't think would be a side effect. As a pediatrician, do you chart the circumference of a baby's skull or head? Yes. If you would tell the members of the jury what the, ba the circumference of that baby's head was on February 21st. Six centimeters. Okay. And I'm a lawyer for a reason. How many inches would that be? Well, uh, divide know? that by uh, 2.54. So you're talking <laughs> roughly around the, you know, maybe 14 I inches. apologize, doctor. That's okay. <laughs> um, but if you, if you know. Well, I'd have to, yeah, so you, you 36.8 divided by 2.54. So you want to do that real quick? <laughs> I can't do that on my head. The judge has a head. calculator for you. Okay, thank you. <laughs> thank you, Your Honor. All right, appreciate that. Coming on. Fourteen point five inches. Okay, and how is that measured? If you would explain that to the jury. Uh, we have a. Uh, a, a tape measure that uh, fits around the, the head, and so you wrap it around and you just read the number. Okay. So if baby Dylan had a two-inch skull fracture, that wouldn't be considered a little skull fracture? If his whole head is 14 inches around? Uh, no, I would think two inches. Two inches is a significant skull fracture. Yeah. So it's a one-inch Skull Any fracture. fracture is significant, absolutely. I have nothing further, Your Honor. <clears throat> Any recross, Mr. Stratton? No, Your Honor. Ms. Scott? Your Honor, if I have just a second. You may. Is this what is excused? When is yes, sir. Yes, sir. You're free to go. Thank you. So you can leave the records. That's what I'm No. Let me call their next witness. Your Honor, State will call Andrea Bowling.
you read the right hand for me, please? Come, we swear the testimony you're about to give will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God. Please have a seat. And ma'am, we do have media in the courtroom this afternoon. Do you have any objection to your image being filmed or photographed during your testimony? No objection. Stephen, you may inquire. Thank you. Ma'am, would you state your name for the record? And how do you spell your last name? B-O-W-L-I-N-G. Thank you. How are you employed? I'm a teacher. Where are you a teacher at? Menford Elementary School. How long have you been a teacher? 18 years. In that time as a teacher, what age groups have you taught? Second grade for 10 years and third grade for eight years. In your time at uh, teaching, has, has that been all in Scioto County? Yes, all at Menford. All at Menford? Menford Elementary. How has teaching evolved in Scioto County over those 20 years? How, I'm sorry. How has teaching evolved in Scioto County over those 20 years? How has teaching evolved in Scioto County? Yeah. Are the kids any different these days or? Oh, yeah, I, yeah from when I first started, yeah, you, there's a big difference in, in kids and their home dynamic and okay. sometimes behavior. Um, have, what, what kind of differences have there been? Uh, since the drug epidemic, you, there's been a lot more um, children with uh, being raised by grandparents and um, or... Uh, you know, their family um, is just kind of suffering and, and they're having difficulties at home due to the, due to dr mainly drugs and um, they need a lot more emotional support and um, compassion and help from teachers. So your duties at school have expanded from just the normal two plus two, I'd say. Oh, absolutely, yes. Now, it's my understanding that you've been a foster parent. Mm -hmm. You need to answer out loud for us. Oh, I'm sorry. Yes. Okay. Yes. And when did you become a foster parent? Um, I was certified in t July of 2017. And what process do you go through to become a foster parent? Uh, we have to take um, classes that train us, 40 hours of classes that train us about different um, things that we need to know as far as kids that might come into the system that we would be taking care of. And um, we have to have drug tests, um, medical physicals, uh, home inspection, um, home studies. Anyone in the home has to take a drug test and also have medical physicals. Um, there's a lot to it. There's um, the there fire department had to come out and inspect the house to make sure it was safe. Um, yeah, there's okay. a lot of a lot of things. Are there, there different types of foster parents that a person can become? I'm sorry. Are there different types of foster care that can be provided or training for for foster parents? Yes, there's. Um, are there different types of foster care? Yes. Yes, you can be trained completely to just foster, or you can be trained to foster to adopt. You can be trained for medically fragile foster children. What, what type of training did you receive? I, I received the foster to adopt training. And why did you receive the foster to adopt training? Um, when I first decided to become a foster parent, I um, was just planning on fostering. Um, I'm 41 years old. I've raised a son who's now in college. And I was just planning on fostering. And um, as I was starting to get all of the paperwork, oh, we had to have BCI and federal background checks too. Um, as we got all of our paperwork together, um, Children's Services said, 
you know, you may want to consider foster to adopt. It's just a few more hours, and, you know, if you don't get it tacked in, into this, you know, you may wish you did later. And I said, okay, you know, yeah, I'll do that. So I went ahead and did foster to adopt. Okay. Seemed like the right thing to do at the time. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Um, before we uh, get to January of 2019, um, had you had uh, previous foster children? Yes. I had two, a six and seven year old, um, and I had them for a year and four months okay. before they were reunited. Okay. And uh, prior to January of 2019, had you ever had an infant before? Uh, a foster care infant? No. Okay. I mean, I'd raised my son. Certainly as a mother, you've had <laughs> right. an infant. Right, yeah. So. I'd like to direct your attention now to January of 2019. Okay. Uh, what happened in January of that year? Okay, so the two foster children that I had um, previously, they were reunited in November of 2018. So I went December and then part of January before I got a phone call, and then I was te teaching, sorry, that's what it is. I was teaching, um, getting ready to, to do attendance, and I got a phone call from Children's Services, and they said, we have a baby that <coughs> needs to be um, in foster care. Would you be willing to go pick him up later? And I, I said, um, Yes. Yeah, I will do that. And I said, I'm teaching today, um, and I need to go get some clothes and diapers, and um, then I will go pick them up around 6. Would that be okay? And they said, Let, we'll call the hospital, and they did, and they got back with me, and that was okay. And so I ended up picking, going down there at 6 o'clock. Okay. If you would just, I, I can hear you, but if you can, and I know. You can't it's, hear me? If you can speak up a little bit more. Okay. Am I? Is it a microphone right here? That's a microphone there, but it's not a broadcast microphone. It's just a recording microphone. Okay, I'll talk louder. Yeah. yeah. You're a teacher. I know you can. I'll use that voice. Okay. Uh, did you have anything to prepare for um, fostering an infant? Did I have anything to prepare was for? It, was there anything you needed to do before? Uh, you said you had to go get diapers, but was your yeah. house ready for an infant at right. that time? Right. I had, from where I had my previous foster son, I had a room that was vacant. Um, my cousin uh, gave me the crib for Dylan. Um, and then I had a rocker recliner upstairs that I brought down so I could rock him. And then a friend of mine from church gave me a mamaroo, which is a... It's a device like what they have at the hospital, which is kind of like a high-tech saucer type thing that rocks the babies um, and soothes them. And so we had one of those brought to the house and just I have a really good support system of friends and family and it was just like clothes were coming in and, and uh, it was almost immediate. I had everything I needed for him. Seems like there was this mad scramble from your community of friends to... It was, yes. It was... A mad scramble, and then, then we had a, a room that was perfect for him. Um, so, were you were you advised of any uh, potential medical condition that Dylan had um, in this call to children from Children's Services? Yes. What was your understanding of uh, what you might might be dealing with? Um, they told me that he was born with drugs in his system. And that he was withdrawing, and that he was um, at that time he was five pounds four ounces, so he was really tiny. Um, that's basically what they told me. Okay. Um, so you'd mentioned you got to the hospital around six o'clock. Yes, around uh, six six thirty. Yeah. What hospital was that? SOMC. Okay. And once you got to the hospital, what, what did you do? Okay, so 
went to the, um, the nursery there at the hospital and uh, met with the nurses. They let me in and then I went through some training on how to, what signs to look for with a baby that's withdrawing and um, how to take care of a, a baby that is, um, you know, has, has been born with drugs in his system and, and you know, uh, for several hours, different types of training for how to take care of him. And then they had to do a car seat test with him because he was so small to make sure he could sit in a car seat. Um, and his, they checked his oxygen um, as he was sitting there for an hour. They had different things hooked up to him. So I watched him do that. And then um, after the car seat test, we, that's when we were ready to go home. Okay. And... Um what, what kind of vocational plans had you made initially when, when you were going to go home with Dylan? What kind of, I'm sorry, I can't. What kind of job plans? Did you have work that you had to go to? Or? Oh, yeah. I mean, I'm a teacher, so I, this was midweek that I got Dylan, and um, I didn't want to leave him with a babysitter or, or daycare, so I took, took 12 days off that I had him. I was going to take more. Next question. Thank you, Ron. Um, you mentioned before that uh, you were advised that uh, uh, that uh, baby Dylan may have some. Um, some symptoms associated with, with drug withdrawal? Yes. Okay. Um, did, you, did you observe any of these symptoms while he was in your care? Yes. What did you observe? He had tremors or his arms would shake. Okay. And his legs would jerk. <laughs> he had sweats. And he liked to be held at all times when he wasn't asleep or... In his mama room, I was holding him. We'll take a recess. But. Okay, I'll get myself together. Let's go ahead and take our afternoon recess at this point. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, remember my earlier admonition to you, do not discuss this case amongst yourselves or with anyone else. Do not permit anyone to discuss it with you or in your presence. It's your duty not to form or express an opinion on this case until it's finally submitted to you. Ms. Bowling, I am going to...
uh, direct you not to discuss the substance of your testimony with anyone until you're back on the stand and until you put your testimony. Do you understand? Yes, I do. Take a short recess. Mr. Bryant, if you could also make sure the other juror in the hall in the restroom makes it down to the jury room. Yes, First recess. <laughs>